From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis revealed last night that a deal has been inked for the delivery of substantial vaccine supplies, giving the Bahamas the capacity to administer the shot to all who wish to receive it, and urged those who have had the vaccines to talk to those who have not to encourage them. Amid another surge in COVID-19 cases, Dr. Minnis made an appeal for more residents to get vaccinated so the country can emerge from the pandemic and fully open its economy. He also announced tighter curfews, which take effect on Wednesday. Parliament met this morning instead of September as it was previously planned. At the time, Dr. Minnis tabled a resolution seeking to extend the country's emergency powers orders for the final time. He said once extended, the orders will come to an end at the latest on November 13th. This as Health Minister Renwood Wells announced this morning at Parliament that the Bahamas has made provisions for the country to receive around 40,000 doses of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. A man is dead and another rushed to hospital after being shot off of Marshall Road last night. Superintendent Michael Johnson of the Criminal Investigation Department told reporters on the scene that the deceased appeared to be in his early 40s. The other victim is believed to be in his mid-20s. Superintendent Johnson said shortly after 7 p.m., police received information about two victims shot in an area off of Marshall Road. Police responded and met two victims on that scene. One was deceased. The other person was taken to hospital via ambulance. This after a man was fatally shot on Saturday night. Police are appealing to members of the public who may have information that can assist with this latest incident and other homicides to contact the Criminal Investigations Department at 502-9991 or 2, Crime Stoppers or 328 Tips. Officials at the National Emergency Management Agency are closely monitoring one of two disturbances in the Atlantic Ocean, one of which could be in Bahamian waters by Wednesday. In a press release issued by the agency, NEMA Director Captain Stephen Russell said while disturbance number one, located 150 miles east of Barbados, had not developed into a tropical depression at the time of the release, there is a 70% chance of further development. Disturbance number two, located several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles, has a 0% chance of development. Disturbance 1, Captain Russell said, was projected to move across the Lesser Antilles during the course of last night and into the Caribbean Sea before traversing Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. NEMO officials project that it could be in Bahamian territorial waters by Wednesday morning. It is expected to clear the Bahamas by Friday evening. Immigration Minister Ellsworth Johnson has confirmed he has tested positive for COVID-19. Mr. Johnson, who is vaccinated against the virus, said he has mild symptoms. I am truly grateful to God for his unmerited favor to my family and I, he told the Tribune yesterday. Stay safe, be careful, practice the protocols and get vaccinated. I am advised that my symptoms were mild because I am fully vaccinated. This comes after attorney Wayne Monroe QC was discharged from doctor's hospital yesterday amid his battle with COVID-19. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced his resignation today over a barrage of sexual harassment allegations in a fall from grace, a year after he was widely hailed nationally for his detailed daily briefings and leadership during some of the darkest days of the COVID-19 pandemic. In a televised address, the 63-year-old Democrat emphatically denied intentionally showing any disrespect toward women, but said that fighting back against what he called the politically motivated attack on him would subject the state to months of turmoil, and I cannot be the cause of that, he said. The three-term Democratic governor's decision, which will take effect in two weeks, was announced as momentum built in the legislature to remove him by impeachment. Only 26 people in New Zealand have died from the coronavirus since the pandemic began, after the nation of 5 million managed to completely stamp it out of its spread. But a big question has arisen. Is it realistic for the country to maintain its zero-tolerance approach, which has included strict lockdowns for even small outbreaks, once it begins to reopen its borders? The answer from an expert group advising the government is a resounding yes. Chaired by epidemiologist David Skagg, the group said in a highly anticipated report released Wednesday, Wednesday, that it believes it's possible to maintain an elimination strategy even after more people start arriving. 
The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A high-pressure ridge just north of the Bahamas will support moderate to locally fresh easterly breezes just ahead of the arrival of potential Tropical Cyclone 6 through tonight. A tropical storm watch is currently in effect for the southeast Bahamas. Beachgoers should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents along eastern shorelines in the southeast Bahamas. Residents are urged to remain hydrated and to limit outdoor activities as heat indices are expected to soar in the triple digits. For all areas, it'll be partly sunny, hot, and breezy, with light passing showers and a slight chance of isolated thunderstorms this afternoon, becoming mostly fair and warm, with a few isolated showers tonight. A small craft caution is in effect for the southeast Bahamas. Winds east northeast to east southeast at 10 to 15 knots, but gusty at times in the northwest and central Bahamas, increasing 15 to 20 knots in the southeast Bahamas. Seas two to four feet over the ocean, but slightly higher in gusts in the northwest and central Bahamas, building four to six feet in the southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 92 degrees, a heat index of 104, and an overnight low temperature of 75. The sun will set this afternoon at 746 and will rise tomorrow morning at 642. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.